Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to swatch the Schmecker Hardem palette that I got for Christmas and those five half pans that I got for Christmas as well from, from my open stock list. And when I showed you the palette in the Christmas haul, they were all in there, but this is how the palette actually came with a cool and a warm primary and transparent sienna, permanent green olive and ivory black. So I've got all the information written down here as well where I'm going to swatch them. And I'm going to swatch the, the palette first and then the five open stock ones. And then I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do this in this video or if I'm doing it off camera. I'm trying to figure out what, what else to add in, in the palette because, I mean, there's plenty of space left. They all fit in there, so there's nine in there now, but I can put 14 half pans in. And I guess what we're gonna do now very quickly, I'm gonna unwrap one of these on camera and then I'll do the rest off camera so you don't have to struggle through that. But I just wanted you to, wanted to show you. Okay, my camera's not focusing. Why are you supposed to be focusing? So can we see that? So you've got the information, you've got the, the name here, so lemon yellow. Then on the side here, you've got the internal schminker number, then the light fastness, um, how opaque it is, if it's staining or not. And I can't remember what all the symbols mean off the top of my head, but I think this means it's transparent and semi-staining, maybe. And then on the other side, let me make sure that you can actually see that. You've got the pigment information here as well. So like how you expect it from a proper professional paint, you've got all the information and then you can do with the information whatever you want. And these Schmincke pans, they're always wrapped in the same way. They've got like this paper band around them. Which makes them, it makes them a little bit, look a little bit like um, a chocolate and then there's the silver wrapping paper as well and then once you've got the half pan out this is what it looks like and whereas you've got you've got their internal number on the pan but no name and no pigment information so if you want to have that on the pan you have to write it yourself but as I said that the number here is the one that corresponds to the one that's on the side here so you as long as you have that and as long as you have access to this information and the, the whole this information is available on their website as well so you can kind of at least see what, what it is but yeah i will ha i will make a swatch card for my palette as well so now i un unwrap the rest of the pans and then we'll be back in a second for you okay i've unwrapped them all and now get straight into the swatching and it's going to do this on camera to show you how much pigment I'm using here in the beginning. Oh. I haven't pre-wet these because from my experience they don't need it and even if they did it would be good to know and that is certainly lemon yellow. It's lemon le yellow PY3 And it's very bright and I think it comes across well on camera as well. Yes, it does. Then the next one is Cadmium Yellow Light, which struck me as kind of an interesting choice. Seeing as it's the warmer yellow, kind of surprising that they just didn't, that they didn't go for a straight Cadmium Yellow. That would be a little bit warmer even because, I mean, yes, it's warmer than this one, but it's not like super warm so it's kind of an interesting choice but i guess i will have to play around with this palette then this is cadmium red light pr 108 so they are real cadmiums but it's the professional range so you would expect their cadmiums to be real cadmiums and as long as you're aware that you're using cadmiums and that you need to be careful with your paint water and how you dispose of it, I guess it's not a problem. It's just, you need to know what you're doing. 
I guess with this one I want to add a little bit more here and see how opaque that is. I find with, I should do it for the cadmium yellow as well, but I find with the yellows they are very rarely, like really, really opaque. But let's add a little bit more. Certainly while it's wet it seems to be covering up the lines a little bit, but let's see what happens when it dries. I said I was going to do this on camera. Oh, sorry, I forgot. So this is Permanent Carmine, our cool red, and it's PV19. Oh, that's a lovely one. I do need to make a PV19 swatch card, I think. Even though by the time this will come out, it's not going to be February anymore. It's the end of February, so by the time this comes out, it will be March. So then, this is Ultramarine Finest. Schmincke have three different Ultramarines in their professional line. And the Ultramarine Finest is the one that granulates the least, I think. So, I am already considering putting another half pan of Schmincke, Schmincke French Ultramarine in here. But we'll see what this does. Sorry for the noise in the background. It's one of my cats climb out, uh, climbing up the cat tree. Then our cool blue is Prussian blue, PB27. And I guess I need to add this to the light fast testing. Let's see how that does. I would like it if this wouldn't, wouldn't fade so much in the sunlight. Because I do actually quite like Prussian blue, to be honest. Even though I also quite like phthalo blue, so, you know. As I always say, I've never met a blue I didn't like. This is Transparent Sienna, PR 101. And I think the Schmincke Burnt Sienna is a mixture of PR 101 and PBK 11. I think, I'm not entirely sure I remember that correctly, but I seem to remember that the Burnt Sienna is a mix of two pigments, which is always like, why? But that doesn't uh, definitely looks very transparent. That's a lovely, it's a lovely you. I love, I love the Sienna's. And this is permanent green olive, which is a mixture of PO62 and PG7. And this is this is a nice green. And this actually, I think I have to compare this. To, maybe I need to compare this to Rosa's green PG8 because I think that might be similar. Maybe. It is, I do think it's a lovely green and it's a useful green for landscapes. I wouldn't call this an olive green, but it doesn't mean it's not good. I would want to have. Yeah, I forgot I was going to do this on camera, I'm sorry. And this is Ivory Black PBK9. I think the ivory black in my Schmincke Academy palette granulates a little bit, so it's going to be interesting to see if this has maybe some granulation to it as well. I think that's an ivory black in my Schmincke Academy palette. So these are, these are the nine colors that came in the little palette. And I think, well, no, I don't know. I will link. I will link to the the palette in, in the description below. I think it's only available from Universal Art Supplies, but I'm not entirely sure. If I can find it somewhere else, I'll link it from somewhere else. But I'll definitely send the put put the link in, in case you're interested. Now I guess I have to move these down a little bit. I kept these with their wrappers because I'm not entirely sure yet what I'm going to do with them and in case I need to make sure, so, so just so I don't get mixed up. And it's mainly because I have yellow raw ochre and raw sienna and they look so similar. I would 
I might confuse them. So this is Quinacridone Violet PV19. And I guess I probably wanted to get this for comparison reasons with the Carmine one. They are both they are both lovely though. This is like a very rosy one. This is really good. I guess what I'll have to do is do some mixes, probably off camera though, and see if I actually need the Granacolon Violet in there or if mixing these two. It looks to me that I should be getting there, but you know, you never know what kind of violets you get until you've tried them. So this is yellow raw ochre. Is that that funny? Yellow raw ochre, which is a mix of PY42 and PY43. So a mix of artificial, not artificial, artificial is not the word. But it's a mix of both the yellow, ox uh, yellow iron oxides. PY43 is the natural iron oxide and PY42 is the synthetic one. And I guess the PY43 can be a bit unpredictable if it's a natural, naturally mined pigment. So maybe that's why they mix it to get some of the characteristics from the natural one, but also to have some predictability with the PY42, because that should be the same every time. And then next we have raw sienna, which is a mixture of PBR7 and PY42. And I mean, yes, they are fairly similar, and I don't think I probably don't need both, both of them in my palette, do I? So I have to... make up my mind and decide which one I want. I'm probably gonna go with the yellow ochre, to be honest, just because it's a little bit lighter. And I've got cat hair in my swatch again. But I'm quite interested to see if one or both of them maybe have a little bit of granulation to them because, you know, the earth colors quite often do. Sorry, I keep forgetting that I wanted to activate the paint on camera. This is Perlin Green, PBK31. And this is lovely. I don't think I have a Perlin. I've had a Perlin Green before. But yes, this is exactly what I hoped it would be. You know, it's a perylene though. Do they, perylenes tend to have quite a bit of a drying shift, don't they? So uh, let's add some more here in mass tone and see if that changes a lot or not. I think my swatches are getting bigger and bigger. Am I still on camera? Yes, I am. Good. And then finally, here's the graphite gray PBK10. And this I really want to compare side by side with the Derwent graphite gray, which is also just a graphite color, but from memory, this is the, the, the Derwent one is not as dark as this one gets. This is really dark and it is smoother, but that might be to do with, with the binder, how they, how they get the graphite in here. Because I mean, seeing as this is a watercolor paint, you would assume that this is the same binder as all the other watercolors. And I don't know exactly what the Derwent graphite and pen, pen the pans use as their binder. And, but it doesn't seem to be as, I don't want to say chalky, but it's definitely not as smooth. The Durban Graffitin is not as smooth as this is. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we get a little bit of that graphite granulation. Yeah, they all are. And I think what I'll do, I don't think I need both of these and I, I will have to decide, if, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe I'll just need to let them dry because at the moment I'm thinking I like, I'm liking this better than this one. So maybe maybe this one goes in first and then when I've done, done with it, I can put that one in. 
maybe. Yeah, that really doesn't re show much, much granulation at all. There's a little bit going on, but that might just be the texture of the of the paper that I'm swatching on. So I don't know, but uh, again, I think what I'll need to do is just use these a bit and mix mix colors and see see what I've got. And well, this is the last swatch I put on, so I really need to let this dry a bit more. But this looks to me like it's quite a bit cooler than the ivory black, so that would then mean I can put them both in and there's there's like a justification to have both of these in there even though I don't use blacks very much but you know sometimes they can come in useful and I think I'm definitely going to put the perylene green in there just because it is lovely so I'll have to decide which of these ones these two I'm going to put into my palette I think now as they're drying, I think I like this one better actually. So maybe it's gonna be this one. I used to say I like yellow ochre more than I than than raw sienna, but recently I'm finding myself gravitating to the raw sienna much more. So I think I'm gonna put the raw sienna in the palette and maybe just wrap up the yellow ochre again and put it with my stash and then once I run out of this, I might put this one in or maybe I find another place for the yellow ochre also possible but yeah thank you for joining me today please give the video a like and consider subscribing to my channel and let me know what you think of this this palette and which ones of the uh, five down here you would put back in and i will see you in the next one thank you very much for watching bye bye now bye